Here we're gonna look at a solution to a nice little number theory problem from the 1999 Bulgarian Math Olympiad. So our goal is to find all integers x and y such that x cubed equals y cubed plus 2y plus 1. Now I'm gonna give you guys a couple of hints before we look at a solution. So this first hint is pretty common whenever you look for solutions to these types of equations over the natural numbers or the integers. And that is there are probably only a few solutions. So there's probably less than five solutions or if there are more than five solutions, some of those solutions are part of an obvious infinite family. And so my next hint is that f of x equals x cubed. In other words, the function which cubes a number is a strictly increasing function. So maybe think about that too as far as these hints go. Okay, so maybe let's jump into the solution. Okay, so hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're ready to look for a solution. So we're gonna go ahead and suppose that x and y are integers satisfying our equation down here. And then we'll get some restrictions on x and y. And after we get those restrictions, we'll be able to find all possible solutions. So here I'm gonna write x cubed is equal to y cubed plus two y squared plus one. So in other words, we've got this ordered pair x, y that satisfies our equation. Now the next thing that I wanna notice is that two y squared plus one is always going to be bigger than or equal to one. And that's because we're squaring something so that we're making it positive or at least non-negative which means this whole thing is strictly bigger than y cubed. It's always bigger than or equal to y cubed plus one, but we wanna write it like this, it is strictly bigger than y cubed. But now, using that last hint, which was that f of x equals x cubed is a strictly increasing function, and then looking at the left-hand side and the right-hand side of this inequality, that tells us that we know that x is bigger than y. Great, so we know that x has to be bigger than y if we have a solution. But now, since we're over the integers, x being bigger than y means that x is bigger than or equal to y plus one. Now we're just gonna cube this again, and this implies that x cubed is bigger than or equal to y plus one cubed. But then we also know that x cubed equals y cubed plus two y squared plus one. So in other words, we're gonna take this inequality right here and replace the x cubed in this inequality with the right hand side of this equation. So that gives us the following inequality. We have y cubed plus 2y squared plus 1 is bigger than or equal to y plus 1 cubed. So let's break it down. If we've got a solution x and y satisfying our goal equation, then y, the y component of that solution, must satisfy this inequality. Okay, so now let's work out this inequality a little bit more so we can see what it implies. So multiplying this out gives us y cubed plus 3y squared plus 3y plus 1, doing like a binomial expansion. But now we can cancel this y cubed out with this y cubed. We can cancel this one with this one. And then we can subtract the y squared over, or the 2y squared over, and that will give us the following new inequality of y squared plus 3y is less than or equal to zero. So I've written it in that format, but it's, a, but it's exactly the same as what we have above. But now that tells us that y times y plus three is less than or equal to zero. But then from like basic algebra, we see that this implies that y has to be on the interval minus three to zero. In other words, y is bigger than or equal to negative three and less than or equal to zero. 
outside of that range and you'll get this guy right here is bigger than zero, strictly bigger than zero, which is not what we want. But since we're working over the integers, that only gives us four possible values for y. So that means y equals negative three, negative two, negative one, or zero. And then we can plug those values of y into our original equation and then solve for x. And if we do that, we'll get the following values of x. So if y is equal to negative three, we'll get an x value of negative two. If y is equal to negative two, we'll get an x value of one. If y is equal to negative one, well, there is no possible x value here. So let's maybe talk our way through that. So if y equals negative one, well then notice here we have negative one cubed plus one, so that's gonna be zero. We'll have x cubed equals two, but that clearly doesn't have a rational solution, let alone an integer solution. And then next, if y is equal to zero, then x is equal to one. And so now tidying all this up and putting it together, it gives us the following three solutions. So we have the ordered pair x, y could be in the set negative two, negative three, comma, one, negative two, comma, and then finally one, zero. So we found all possible solutions, or I should say integer solutions to our goal equation. And that's a good place to stop.